<sighs> wow, this thing weighs a lot too. Uh, this is the Felicity combined inverter charger. This thing weighs around 25 uh, kilogram, and uh, it's the new series built by the Felicity Solar. This is the IBPS series. In all my previous videos, you will only be seeing IBPL. There's only one IBPS, which is uh, 1.5 kBE. Uh, so today we are going to be unboxing this. So I'll be using my utility knife here. Wow. Um, if you have to look uh, inside, the inverter is well protected with these uh, forms. And to the side, you have the user manual and the conformity certification. Then there is the battery terminal covers, and there is this uh, I think it's a cover for the terminal block. Then there is this uh, cable, which is the inverter cable. I think this will be around 25 uh, square millimeter. I'm not sure. Yes, it's 25 square millimeter. You can see it here from the. Sorry, I couldn't focus well from the cable lock. So I will be removing it from the carton now before I start. Uh, this is the inverter. This is the connection cable that comes with the inverter. Usually, Felicity have some of the best uh, cables that come with the inverter. You know, for the Chinese uh, inverter, some of them you will see them with a very fully made cable. See the cable lock. Uh, this is a 25 square millimeter cable uh, you can see here uh, the inverter these are they have the negative and the positive terminals it's a 24 volt uh, you have the remote control port these are rs 232 and uh, it doesn't have any receptacle or a socket so you have to make all your connections through the terminal block here this for the input the output this for the input and uh, from the side you will see it's a table fault called table uh, from this side and from the other side it's just uh, information about the model we have here is the uh, IBPS 2524 it is rated for 2000 watt so all I will be doing today is I will connect this inverter to my battery bank that I have set up here. Uh, this is a 200 amp hour 24 volt battery bank. So I will connect the inverter to the battery bank. I may be connecting, I think, because I want to make a very large load test. So I will probably connect a charge controller to get a little power from the charge controller so that I do not overwork the batteries. So let's get going. So I'll be turning the inverter this way and uh, you can see right here I have the terminals here you always want to connect your uh, you are cable to the inverter first because you don't want to have a live wire flying around anything anything that causes a spark it could result into some damages so you better connect your inverter wire to the inverter first then you connect it to the batteries i'll be connecting to the batteries now So now I have the inverter connected to the battery, uh, negative to negative, positive to positive. So now if I turn the inverter on, we will see it bring light on. Good. So our inverter is turned on. You see, we are having a 
see our inverter is turned on uh, we have 220 uh, volt I can use this uh, as a scroll then you see the voltage of my battery is 25.8 uh, this is the charging current if there is a power input from the grid this is the battery the load is 0 percent 0 ba 0 watt this is the version of the software on the inverter then we have already called this is the output voltage uh, output frequency uh, input frequency then you see we have already uh, come back to where we begin so basically what this one is telling you this is the output which is 220 this is the input so this inverter is programmable and we will be programming some little items but the first thing that i would want to check now is uh, the no load for our consumption i'll be using my clamp meter as usual you see i'm a dc but i will be turning it to current measurement i have to zero my two rms then i will clamp this cable you see it is drawing 2 amp which is around uh, 50 watt so as usual all this uh, 2.5 kva inverter of velocity they usually do because even my 12 volt i draw around 2 point something amp uh, sorry 4 point something amp or 3.85 amp so you see this is almost the center so in terms of no load power consumption they have not have got anything so i have connected uh, the inverter to the battery and i have also connected the two terminal uh, blocks both for the input and for the output uh, also while offline i connect a charge a small charge controller with about 300 wattage of uh, solar panel just so that to support the battery because i will be putting a much load on the inverter uh, so i will turn the inverter again on this is a uh, inco uh, 2000 watt heat gun so I will be using a heat gun on the inverter to see what would happen so I put my heat gun here uh, I will turn off the receptacle and uh, I'll plug you see so so what I will be doing I think it has two levels there is the first level uh, let me bring it closer here so that we can see the load on the inverter you see now the load on the inverter is 0 ba so i put it on the low you see the inverter is making some humming sound uh, but now the heat gun is working it is drawing 770 watts well i put it in the highest level which is 1.54 kg so i don't understand why the home is stopped but it can power this heat gun if i tell it you see it's still 1.54 kilowatts yeah. so i think what I will be doing maybe is uh, I will put this uh, heat gun on on the inverter for a little time so that I will see but the fan here is uh, I can feel the blow of the fan here and uh, from the other side the fan is at this side but uh, let me the next thing I will be testing is uh, you see I I don't know what is happening but uh, with the small the smaller level it is making some homing sound with just 700 watt but when i put it to the full lot it is making uh what do you call it i think if you can look inside you can see the heat gun is very hot uh, so, uh, so basically this is working I'll scroll back again. This is at 76%. So I'll be turning this one. 
I think it powers it powers the uh, heat gun very well. Uh, I think the next thing I will do is I will be connecting uh, induction cooker to it. So let me go and grab my induction cooker. So next on my test list is this uh, induction cooker. Uh, the induction cooker is uh, this is a 2000 watt induction cooker. So I will first connect it here. Good. So the induction hub is on. I'll be putting my pot here. So usually I don't know. Let me see what will happen is I will turn it on first. Wow, it's working and the pan just kick on. You see, I'm doing uh, 1.05 kBA on 80 degree. Uh, I can add it and 100, it is 1.16, 1.3. I'm going 1.45. 1.6 wow then it kicks up so basically wow it cannot handle it is a uh, arrow code 15 and from the side if you have arrow code 15 it is saying that output should psych it so we turn it up and uh, I think if we turn it on again, it will come. Wow. So I think if the click, if the output is short circuited, let me check the output here. This is the inverter output. Let me turn it on again. So now I click on it and it come back. So what this is telling me that uh, it can handle. Let me test again. Okay. Okay. Now I see what is happening. Uh, so there is a problem with this uh, induction hub. So I turn it off again. So I think what I will do is I will find some other load to test. Well, the view here is uh, as a result of this uh, induction hub being short circuited. Uh, it already has a problem before I try to fix it. I replace the MOSFET. So I think uh, maybe there is still something that needs fixing here. But uh, instead, I bought another one. Let me keep this one there. So let me use this again to test the induction hub on this. So I'll put it here. So basically we can say that the short circuit protection is working perfectly. You see it triggers twice. Uh, so I will turn on the inverter again. The inverter is on. I will, I will scroll down uh, to uh, I will scroll down to the load on the inverter you see frequency is 50 hertz and uh, the load is zero so what I will be doing is I will turn on this induction hub you see this one is on and uh, I will still be using the same pot and uh, I will be turning the induction hub on. You can see it's going 1.1 B. I will be going off at 100, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. 
1.3 so I'm scrolling here I see 1.5 H 1.6 1.6 so you see this induction hub I push it all the way to 240 degree and uh, it does not trigger it does not turn off as it does with the other so my battery voltage is 23.6 and the load is 1.8 so basically it can power the induction hub it's only that that induction hub has a problem that is why the short circuit protection of the inverter kicks in when I was trying to put it when I do when I try to put it in a very high temperature if you look at this uh, port uh, my induction hub is my water is already boiling well what do you expect with 1800 wattage on the induction hub and the side and everything is very cold you can even put your hand here as usual with the induction hub well so basically I think the only thing that I can text next is uh, I will put a lot with uh, such like a freezer so I will be connecting a freezer now so I connect this wire to my freezer you can see the load is zero it spikes to 1.3 then it comes back to 286 286 160 another wow. thing that I would want to test with this inverter is uh, automatic transfer switch uh, we have already connected the cable for the input so I will be connecting a rice cooker this rice cooker to the inverter so that I will load it I will connect the input when it is working so now I turn this one on you see the inverter is on keep low keep uh, one so my load is on the inverter we are doing 622 watt so what I will be doing is uh, I'll be connecting the input okay you see this good you see now it is showing a sign here that there is a uh, input coming so what we need now is to see whether the transfer switch will work uh, let's see we are waiting See, this is the sign of the that there is a grid connected so we are still waiting to see whether the transfer aha uh -huh, now the transfer switch has already kicked in so now still what we are seeing is the inverter if i scroll or if i escape outside you see this is the input which is 218 volt this is the output 218 volt and the battery is charging if i scroll again i can see with what i'm so basically I can see this inverter is quite all right you see I have uh, used a heat gun, heat gun on it uh, induction cooker and uh, even a freezer so I think what other tests that you would want me to do with this inverter again let me know in the comment section below please and uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time